Hello, and welcome to the short introduction video of Zone Scan Net by Guterman. Entering your own customer account in the cloud is easy. All you need is a web browser, an internet connection, a username, and a password. And you've got access to your data at any time from anywhere. If you are an English speaker, your ZoneScanNet account will appear all in English. As you can see here, the software is split up into three main sectors. For one, there's the header section, in which you can switch between important views, select a project, set the measurement period, and select an object. Directly below, there is the Maps element, which is the most important element. For this, we use Google Maps, including all of its functionalities like Google Street View, Satellite View, Bird's Eye View, all depending on availability in your area. Our objects are displayed as layers, meaning that you can decide what you would like to see. Each dot you see here represents a Zone Scan A20, correlating radio logger, that sends its collected measurement data via the Alpha to the Zone Scan Net server every night which in turn automatically runs all calculations and provides you with the measurement results of that same night. The layer view also makes it possible to display your piping network in the form of a KML. Inside that KML, you can deposit additional data, such as the diameter and the material of the respective pipe. To the right, you can find the respective detail lists, split up into correlations and logger noises. There are two evaluation categories. Logger noise evaluations are based on the measuring points, while correlations are relative values between two measuring points, but more on that later. When choosing an object from the list, it is automatically centered on the map. And when choosing something on the map, the respective logger automatically gets selected in the list. You can display additional data by double-clicking, which we will do now, using this leak as an example. As you can see, the loggers are red, which indicates a high probability of a leak being present. The system evaluates different measurement parameters. We are now looking into a logger. You get additional information in this window, one of which being the histogram, meaning the amplitude distribution. The logger performs measurements for one to two hours per night and registers the decibel values over time. During these two hours, the logger listens to the network every five or 10 seconds and records the existing noise level. As can be seen here, a level of over 30 decibels was recorded over the course of two hours, raising the first suspicion that something might be wrong. However, based on this information, you would only know that there is a relatively loud noise, but not what that type of noise is. It might be a 50 Hz hum. It might be some kind of pump or an electrical substation. All you know is that a relatively high sound level of 30 decibels is present. To differentiate between all possible sources, you can take a closer look at the spectrum in the next window. A leak is usually at the upper end of the spectrum, as visualized very well in this case. The peak is in a high frequency range, typical of a leak noise in harder materials as opposed to softer ones. Additionally, you have the option to download the sound file of any specific logger, and this way listen to the real sound recorded of this very logger last night, or any night before. The historical values and development are also worth looking at. A leak or pipers doesn't usually just appear overnight, but it develops slowly. In this situation here, you can see from this historical chart of leak values of this logger, starting right back from the 23rd of October 2010, that this logger has been relatively quiet for a long time until a leak started appearing, slowly developing and making more noise over the period of a few weeks, and finally reaching its maximum size with a leak value of close to 100, a strong indication for the existence of a leak. The same principle applies to the minimum decibel values, which are always at a relatively low level and start rising slowly and continuously towards March 2012 to reach the maximum level of 30 decibels. In addition, you can leave comments and images. 
However, the much more interesting and powerful functionality is the so-called correlation. The zone scan system does not only provide histograms and the spectrum for each measurement point, but it also records and collects several sound samples from every logger every single night. These sound recordings are synchronized to the millisecond. This enables the system to correlate and compare all logger sound recordings and determine whether and which two loggers are picking up the exact same noise source. If that is the case, a visualized correlation will be shown on the map. However, this correlation needs further input. The system does not yet know anything about the material, the diameter, or the pipe architecture connecting the two loggers, and it can therefore also not indicate the exact leak position accurately. All the system is aware of at this point is the fact that the two loggers are picking up the same noise, and that this noise has the spectral characteristics of a water leak. If you haven't already entered the pipe data, one way of getting it done now is by starting a manual correlation. If you haven't already entered the pipe data, one way of getting it done now is by starting a manual correlation. You pull up an addition window for that, in which all input details are temporary. As soon as you close this window, those temporary settings will be deleted again. This way you can try several filter settings and watch their effect in real time without affecting the original data. In order to simplify the entire process, ZoneScan.net has a neat tool called Pipe Wizard, which enables you to obtain your ultimate goal, meaning the exact position of the leak noise, in just three simple steps. I will now delete the old data so we can now see the interface as it is, without any inputs. At this point, the system does not know the properties of the pipe, such as the material and the diameter, nor does it know the route of the pipe and therefore the length of it, all points of data needed by the system to accurately pinpoint the location of the noise source. All the system knows is that the two loggers are picking up the same noise and that this noise is in a frequency band typical for a leak. We are now starting the pipe wizard. The pipe wizard consists of three main steps. In step number one, you can place the loggers in the correct locations on the map. Here you can see a few KMLs and some hydrants as a layer. You can easily adjust the position by dragging and dropping it. The second one seems to be pretty on the spot already. In the second step, you can lay your pipe. All you need to do is to grab the node and move it to the location you want, creating and bend in your pipe route. You can create as many nodes as you like, increasing the granularity of your pipe route to come as close to reality as possible. Going back is as easy as well. The pipe is now laid out according to the KML file, corresponding to the connection between the two loggers. As you can see, I can click on the pipe and retrieve detailed information. In this case, we are dealing with a 100 mm gray cast iron pipe. The system automatically obtains the length of each segment. In this example, there are 112.4 meters overall between the two measuring points that are picking up the same noise. Proceeding to the last step, in which you can define the materials and diameters. In this case, nothing needs to be changed. We have gray cast iron pipes with a diameter of 100 millimeters, resulting in a sound velocity of 1342 meters per second. When you click Done, the system recalculates the correlation based on the inputs you made. As you can see, the correlation is now located in a different spot, almost exactly on the hydrant in the middle, which is where the leak was actually located. In addition to that, you can try different filter settings in real time. As soon as you let go of this switch, the correlation is relocated based upon the new filter settings. This tool is very useful when dealing with noises that aren't leaks, for instance, PRVs. As soon as you have finished the calculation and determined the correct location of the leak, you can now create a printable incidence report directly inside this correlation window. This report is very useful if you want to hand a printout to your repair team, which can then use it to orientate itself out in the field. You can decide what the report should contain, whether maps should be displayed or also street view, if available for this neighborhood, and if the correlation graph and the spectrum chart should be in it. By clicking OK, the system generates a report that can also be emailed instead of just printed. Another useful piece of information that can be included in the report is the street address and number, which is an additional help for repair teams. This was a general overview of the ZoneScan.net user interface. Thanks for listening in and enjoy ZoneScan.net!